Thanks, Matt, for that introduction. And thank you, everybody, for, uh, for staying for this very last session. Uh, I see some familiar faces. That's not rather nice. Um, I'm talking about reproducibility in the context of Revolution R Open. Uh, so to, to tell you what that means, what is Revolution R Open? Well, that, that's the product that uh, we developed at Revolution Analytics over the last number of years. Uh, and of course, that's no, it, you would have seen our stand outside is now Microsoft. So we were acquired by Microsoft in, in April. Our first day was in, in, in May this year. And we are now uh, porting all the work that we've done over the, over the last uh, seven years into Microsoft, which... So what is reproducibility? And I'll talk about uh, one a mechanism of solving that using the checkpoint package, which is something we bundle inside Revolution or Open. So I'll talk very briefly about that, uh, and I'll give a bit of a, a code demo in the process. You may have seen this type of heading in the news in the last month, yes? Anybody seen this type of? Uh, thanks, Pat. You, I can always count on you, uh, and a few others. So you would have seen headings like this in Nature, challenges in irreproducible research. Uh, and, and you would have seen uh, headings like this. This was in the Boston Globe. In science, irreproducible research is a quiet crisis. Now, researchers would tell you that that um, probably not news. Uh, but what happened in, in the broader context was that somebody uh, in the last few, few months and years uh, took a list of the 100 most quoted or referenced uh, pieces of research in social science and tried to actually reproduce that, that piece of work. And they actually did the experiments again and found that in, in more than half of those very famous studies, they could not reproduce the supposedly very good science. Uh, it's being reported on our, our own world as well. Our open sky, the open, open science foundation, said this, this is a year ago, reproducible research is still a challenge. So what is reproducibility? Well, this is what uh, Max Kuhn says uh, at the Grand Task View on reproducible research. The goal of reproducible research is to tie specific instructions to data analysis and experimental data so that scholarship can be recreated, better understood, and verified. Now, if you look at his at the task here right now, it talks mostly about, about methods in R, mostly about, about literate programming. Uh, I've, I've heard lots of references in the last two days, including the last hour, on, on knit R and Markdown. Who's using knit R and Markdown? Uh, most of you, that's fantastic. Um, previously, I mean, you'll know, of course, that, that Prior to NITAR, R itself is steeped in the, in the paradigm of literate programming. Who's used SWEAVE in the past? So if you want to use, thankfully, nobody has to use that anymore. Um, if you wanted to create PDF documents in the past, created from R code, SWEAVE and LaTeX was the way to go. It's much easier now. So in effect, what Max is saying is that reproducible research is a method and an environment, and that is what, you give the, that's what gives you the, the reproducible results. So it's a process for sharing your, that method, describing the environment that you created the data and research in, and then somehow recreating that results. So I'm not going to talk about the science, but this is not just uh, a, a a, a crisis in social research and studies that nobody believed in anyway. This is an example that was in the New York Times in, in 2011. Uh, these two researchers tried to replicate a cancer study and discovered that they could not. And after some extensive debugging and backward engineer or reverse engineering, they got hold of the Excel XCS, Excel, that this data was, uh, the, the, the analysis was done in, and discovered a, a flaw in that which invalidated, invalidated the entire research. But I'm going to assume that you are a, a lot of very responsible uh, data scientists, and you're not going to do that. You're going to use some sensible methods in academia or in business, because we want to be sure that our business processes still run tomorrow. 
So what's the problem in R? The problem is this, that R versions themselves are pretty manageable. I mean, you can go and download probably all the way to, down to R version 1.0 if you really wanted to. But most of the recent versions of R you can definitely find. There are really good solutions for literate programming, embedding your code in, in Markdown and, and making the res these results easily to share, or easy to share. And you get excellent tooling in RStudio. But the big problem is packages. So who's had this problem that you wrote code last week which no longer works because some package changed? I, I go on. Some, some of you are just shy, right? <laughs> This happens, it happens all the time, because your favorite package author made a change that improves that package and that breaks something. So it literally is this. It's, it's, a, it's a problem that my, my script worked yesterday. Somebody else wants to run that today, and they have a different version of an R package, and it no longer works because of package updates. So let me introduce you to the Checkpoint package, uh, which is part of the reproducible R toolkit, uh, which, is, which we bundle uh, uh, with Revolution R Open. And basically what this allows you to do, what we do for you, is we back up all of CRAN every single day. Every single day since September last year, so it's now an entire year's worth of, of history we have, we make a backup of CRAN. We've effectively built a CRAN time machine. You can go back in time and download the versions of, of anything on CRAN, source, Windows binaries, Mac binaries, anything you wish, uh, as it existed on a specific date. So you can see where this is going. Now all you have to do is to say to, to somebody, use a specific version of R, and use versions of packages on that specific date, and if it worked on that date, then it should work for you today, as, as it worked on that uh, in, in the past. So, how do you use Checkpoint? Well, it's, it's uh, the package is on CRAN, it's called Checkpoint. And you simply write Checkpoint and a date at the top of your script, and any, or any other date you want. And that's really it. You don't have to do anything else. Because we have the server-side solution, you don't have to ship metadata, you don't have to compile your packages, you don't have to zip them up, nothing. All you have to do is that. And optionally, you can specify the version of R that is required. Because we do know that there are some changes in R, minor as they may seem from version to version. Sometimes you want to go back to a specific version of R. And why is it important to have this back-end solution? It's because of this uh, problem of package uh, explosion. Um, if, if you're installing, uh, I, let's pick a random package, ggplot, one of the most uh, popular packages out there, probably number two, or maybe even number one. If you install ggplot, you'll get page after, for the first time on a clean machine, you'll get page after page of, of red text that looks like warnings for the newbie, uh, saying I'm installing Reshape 2, and I'm installing RCCP, and about 25 other, other packages. So this graph here is just a graph of five or six popular packages, just the direct dependencies. So if you were to zip up all of that, uh, 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 then it gets a problem for you eventually. So quick demo. Demo done. So how does it work? Uh, work within a project. If you are using our studio, that's your normal workflow. Um, uh, create some master script called master.r or checkpoint.r that just contains the, uh, the code for, for the date. And in that project, don't, never use install the package, the packages directly. Checkpoint does that for you. So, so we discover the packages from your library or require statements. And, and that's really it. And then you literally just share your project. So zip up the folder that contains the scripts and your data, share that, uh, and that's it. Uh, your recipient only needs a, a version of R that's the same and Checkpoint and an internet connection because we, we go to the grand time machine called MRAN. Uh, MRAN used to be just a code name, and then now we call it the Managed R Archive Network. 
And then Checkpoint does everything else. Um, the only thing you may have to go and do is if you have system dependencies, if you're working on Linux and you're, you're using curl or this type of thing, you will have to take care of that. But our packages, Checkpoint deals with that for you. Um, and how does it do it? Well, it's because, because of the crown mirror. You can find more details at mrand.revolutionanalytics.com. And the snapshot is there. You can actually go and it's not this. We haven't built a pretty good uh, UI for it or anything. You can literally just type in the snapshot date, go and browse through CRAN as it existed back then. Um, some, some things that you may want that don't exist yet, but if you want it, please come and help. It's an open source project. Uh, if you want to use GitHub, it won't discover GitHub packages automatically. So you can do something like install.github. Uh, and point to a specific reference or a specific SHA. Uh, that'll be a, a workaround. Uh, right now, um, it, it's not completely trivial to use Bioconduct. I, I believe that's possible because Bioconduct is inherently versioned if you are using that. And if you're using private packages behind the firewall, you may have to bundle the source for that and use just install the packages uh, directly as you would, as you would in, in a normal environment. Who's using Packrat? Oh, interesting. Far, any, anybody's ever used Packrat? Who's heard of Packrat? Okay, great. So, um, why? Who's using Checkpoint? <laughs> Excellent. One, one to nil. I win. <laughs> um, at least one user in the world uses Checkpoint. That's fabulous. So I have, I have a lower limit now, a lower bound. So why would you use Packrat uh, and not Checkpoint? It's, it's because Checkpoint is, um, Checkpoint is limited, but very, very easy. You have to specify those packages in a date. There's no GitHub support, nothing. Packrat is very powerful, but a bit more work. You have to go and do that packaging and distribution and zipping a little bit yourself. Uh, and even though they, they've made that a lot easier, uh, you can ship the, the, the lock file, but it, you will also have to install from source. Whereas using CRAN, using MRAN, you install binaries, and that's it. Okay, so just in, in, in two sentences, what's the revolution R, R open? It, it, well, it's R. It, it's R as you know it. What we do to that is we add the Intel MKL, which means that your, your math will be faster and parallel. So you'll get a speed up of sometimes nothing and sometimes up to 24. It's up to 24 if you use a lot of matrix algebra in your, in your, in your code. Um, it's available for download right now. Uh, it's completely compatible and it, it's faster. So in summary, I think Checkpoint is a wonderful way of, of ensuring reproducibility for your code in your production environment. It's open source. Uh, please come and help, and please come and contribute. There's the URL, and um, please come and report your issues and, and contribute if you wish. <laughs>